why do you believe the bible why not the quran why not some occultic books why the bible that is one question every believer will have to answer why have you decided that the bible is final authority in your life why why not some other book why not biology why not psychology why the bible there are other ancient books there are other religious documents why not those why the bible why the bible instead of other books because ultimately everybody have their own set of beliefs why do you want me to abandon my traditional worship and believe a bible that i don't know where it was written from at least my idol worship my traditional religion i know it originated from my ancestors why the bible if you are not a believer you have the right to ask this question and get it answered beyond every shadow of doubt and this is the critical point or this is the crux of the matter and until this question is answered in a man's life he will never have absolute confidence in the authority of scripture that's why some people are in church but they still have some native doctors somewhere that they consult because they have not been confronted with the truth of why must i even rely on the bible because everything you discuss as a christian concerning your faith and eternity is going to hinge on that question why the bible i choose to believe the bible because it is a reliable collection of historical documents written by eyewitnesses during the lifetime of other eyewitnesses they report supernatural events that took place in fulfillment of specific prophecies and their writings are divine rather than human in origin the question here is why do i choose to believe the bible and not any other book as my final authority well the answer is in the same bible i choose to believe the bible because there is no higher authority than the bible if i were to make reference to another authority to defend the bible i will be conceding the fact that there is a higher authority than the bible since there's none it is still the same bible that will defend itself i'm establishing to you that this is the highest authority the bible therefore by definition i cannot appeal to another authority second peter 1 16 again for we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our lord jesus christ but were eyewitnesses of his majesty we were eyewitnesses now peter in this text of scripture is responding to questions and queries about the authority of the scriptures for we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our lord jesus christ but we are eyewitnesses of his majesty for he received from god the father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased and this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount we have also a more sure word of prophecy whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation for the prophecy came not in all time by the will of man but the holy men of god spake as they were moved by the holy ghost so this is peter's response and it is from this response we got the answer that i gave to you it's a reliable collection of historical documents it's important that it's reliable and it's important that it's a collection and it is important that it is historical all that is important it is reliable it is a collection and it is historical three words now peter says in second peter 1 16 in other words they were not myths we have not followed cunningly devised fables 
is not a fantasized story this is not the figment of a man's imagination the scriptures we are not some people who sat down in a corner to script a fantasy that's what peter is saying we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the parousia the coming of our lord jesus but we were i we saw it we saw it we didn't hear some fantasy somewhere we were eyewitnesses of his excellent majesty we were even there when a voice came out of heaven we saw elijah and moses we saw them disappear we heard the voice say this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased hear him we were there they didn't tell us it can be proven in the annals of history so it's not a collection of mythos these are facts notice the next phrase but we are eyewitnesses of his excellent majesty so notice the second part of our definition for defense we have a reliable collection of historical documents written by eyewitnesses written by eyewitnesses he says we were eyewitnesses first john chapter 1 verse 1 that which was from the beginning which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life had seen looked upon touched that's key that's key we have seen it we have heard it a historical collection of reliable documents written by eyewitnesses these were not people who had a vision they didn't die it was not a subconscious experience it was not an out of body experience they were not suspended in an open vision they say we touched it we touched him we saw him we heard him we know what we are talking about second agaba eyewitnesses to these events wrote about the events that they saw themselves so we have a reliable collection of historical documents written by eyewitnesses but they were written during the lifetime of other eyewitnesses so it's not just that witnesses wrote the document when they wrote the documents other eyewitnesses of the same events were alive other eyewitnesses of the same events we are alive written by eyewitnesses during the lifetime of other eyewitnesses a lot of people who argue with that you know let's take care of those argumentators first corinthians 15 verse 1 moreover brethren i declare unto you the gospel which i preach unto you which also you have received and wherein you stand by which also you are saved if you keep in memory what i preach unto you unless you have believed in vain for i delivered unto you first of all that which i also received how that christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures and that he was seen of kephas peter then of the twelve after that he was seen of above 500 brethren at once of whom the greater part remain unto this present but some are falling asleep next verse after that he was seen of james then of all the apostles and, and last of all he was seen of me also as one born out of due time do the mathematics if you do the math there is at least 301 witness to the resurrection who were alive when first corinthians was written 301 witnesses who were still alive who saw the resurrection when first corinthians was written